Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to the We All Juggle Knives channel. This video is going to be about health and fitness. This should be a great help to those of you who are on a journey to health, uh, weight loss, and fat loss. Yes, which is the majority, the majority of Americans are now overweight, unfortunately, doing my part to try to help you out. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about five of the most common negative and detrimental behaviors uh, for fat loss. These are behaviors that are going to make you fat, keep you fat, and make you even fatter. Now this is basic information, but that's exactly what we need because you just need the basics and the fundamentals. We just need to hammer those home into your brain until you accept them. All right, so without further ado, what are these five behavior patterns? Okay, the first one, binge eating. Binge eating. The second one, excessive portion sizes. The third one, eating too frequently. The fourth one, addiction to fast food, junk food, and overly processed food. And the fifth one, sedentary lifestyle. That's where you're a couch potato, you're not getting enough movements and exercise. Okay, so those are the five. In the comments section, be honest, write down which of those you engage in. You know, if you only do one or two, you might be a little bit overweight. If you do two or three, okay, now you're in the danger, danger zone. You know, three or four, and you've got a serious problem. And if you do all five, you just might end up on that show, uh, My 600 Pound Life, if you've ever seen that show. All those people, they, they do all five of those negative behavior patterns. So what I'm going to do is give you one solution for each of these behavior patterns, right? But first, why on earth should you listen to me? Well, if you didn't know, if you're new here, I actually lost, over the last three years, I lost 85 pounds of body fat, and I've added a good amount of muscle uh, on top of that loss, and I've maintained that loss uh, for quite a long time. All right, so that's why you should listen to me. But everybody has to be accountable, including me. So what I'm gonna do right now is roll in a few clips from, uh, some are from yesterday, some are from the day before yesterday, but they are all extremely recent. Just some clips to show you kind of where I'm at in my fitness and health journey on my program. So let's roll in those clips and then we'll come back and we'll try to help you out. See, on this channel, we believe in show and prove. Ain't nobody gonna fucking listen to you about what to eat or how to eat unless they can see how you look. Some triceps there. More triceps. More shoulders. You see the bicep. I do weightlifting for the legs as well as running and kickboxing style kicking. All right, so I feel my leg is fairly muscular, fairly strong. I'm happy with the leanness for sure. In the comments section, tell me where you are in your program. Don't make excuses. I don't care if you failed, write that you fucking failed. Okay, or that you're failing and you plan not to. In this channel, we believe in show and prove. No fucking excuses. Stop making 
fucking excuses. If your family doesn't support you, fuck them. No fucking excuses. No fucking excuses. Had good workouts those days. Uh, yesterday, I did a chest and shoulders workout with weights on the bench, and then I topped it off with a calisthenics workout at the park with a lot of pull-ups. The day before that, I ran uh, three miles in a fasted state and got some cardio in and got the legs, the blood pumping to the legs. All right, and now I am calm. I'm calm again, and I've reached my Zen center. Okay, so what are five ways to combat those five negative behavior patterns that we talked about earlier? Ah, well, the way to stop binge eating, at least for me, was to substitute a pre-planned calorie-controlled meal for the binges. Because if you're a binge eater and you have that urge to binge, you can't just sit there trying to resist it. You're going to crack. You need to replace it with something. Me personally, I replaced it with a turkey sandwich. And my turkey sandwich was calorie controlled to equal 600 calories. So I replaced these binges that were like an entire bucket of KFC chicken or a pizza, you know, three, 4,000 calories. I would replace that with a 600 calorie, calorie controlled pre-made meal that I had ready, all right? And after doing that a number of times, I no longer had the urge to binge, okay? So this is what's called the substitution method to um, stop your binging, right? The idea is that the calorie controlled meal is just enough to satisfy you, just enough that you no longer have the irrational urge to eat everything in sight. And it worked like a charm for me, Right? But the key is you have to have that planned in advance, pre-planned, ready to go, right? so that you, you don't get in that situation. Oh, there's nothing healthy in the house. I guess I have to order the food. None of that. Pre-planned and calorie controlled. Try it out. See if it works for you. How to combat excessive portion sizes. Well, now excessive portion sizes means that you're not quite binging at each meal but every meal or the majority of your meals are a little bit larger than what they should be. And that adds up over the years. Okay. Well, the opposite of that would simply be measurement. Buy yourself a food scale, buy yourself some measuring spoons, and then go online or just buy a book that tells you the correct portion sizes for your goals. You know, obviously the correct portion size it depends on how much fat you have to lose, how tall you are, how active you are, but you can look that stuff up on nutrition websites. So find out the right portion size and then measure out your portions. Because if you're obese, clearly you've just been estimating and clearly your estimates, estimates are way off if they've led you to obesity, right? So the, the way to combat excessive portion sizes is strict measurement. All right, what is the solution to eating too frequently? In order to understand why this is bad, I had to read a book called The Obesity Code, written by Dr. Fung. If you want to pick one up, I'll include a link to that Obesity Code. But Dr. Fung cites study after study after scientific study, and in that book, he really slams home how bad it is to eat too frequently. Now, let me summarize it briefly. Your body has a hormone called insulin. Uh, when you eat, your insulin spikes. Insulin tells your body to take calories away from your metabolism and put them into fat storage. So every time you spike your insulin, you're literally telling your body to accumulate more fat and to take energy actually away from your metabolism, which is why you're so tired. So in order to lose, in order to burn fat, you have to be in a low insulin state. Your insulin has to go down and stay low for a period of time. When you eat constantly throughout the day, you're in the complete opposite. It's spiking, spiking, spiking. It never gets to the point that you can even burn fat. So it is incredibly detrimental. 
That's the short explanation. If you're still not convinced, you're going to have to do some homework, buy the book, listen to that doctor, but you, you will be unable to continue if you've, once you've read it, because he really hammers it home and makes it inescapable. So the solution is just to increase your base of knowledge. And so basically what Dr. Fong does is he convinces you how poisonous that habit is. Okay, so increase your knowledge, or you could just trust me, but if you don't trust me, you're gonna have to read the book, do some homework. So that's what I would recommend. Research it, read the obesity code. There's also another doctor, Dr. Nauzardin, who if you watch the 600 pound life TV show, he is also very against snacking. So why do these two doctors that are renowned all over the world to be, uh, for being fat loss specialists, both of those doctors say, do not snack. So it's because they know what they're talking about. Okay, next up, addiction to fast food, junk food, overly processed food. This is when the majority of your meals or the majority of your calories are coming from a fast food drive-through or you, you, go, you, uh, you get DoorDash or something like that, delivery, or maybe you just buy it from the store, like you go to a convenience store and you're eating ice cream and soda and hot dogs from a convenience store, stuff like that. All right, these are foods that are highly addictive. They usually are, a lot of them are deep fried in oils. The breadings are very bad. The sauces they put on these are usually sugar-based and horrible. They have stuff like MSG to make them addictive and of course just massive amounts of salt that make you bloated and, and sugar, all right? so. These foods are bad for you. The best way to quit these is to learn to cook. Because if you know how to cook, you can take healthy, healthier, lower calorie whole foods, and you can make something that tastes pretty darn good. And then you can replace the detrimental fast food, which has almost no nutrition as well. You can replace it with stuff that still tastes pretty good. Now, you have to understand, you know, your home cooked meal, it's not gonna hit your brain in the same way, right? Like no matter how good you are at cooking the uh, baked chicken breast or whatnot, it's not gonna have the same effect as like eating 50 pixie sticks and getting a sugar rush. But at some point you need to grow up. You know, that's something that we used to do as kids when we were like five years old on Halloween. Oh, a sugar rush. At some point you need to grow up and get maturity. And I can tell you, the only reason you want a sugar rush is because your hormones and metabolism have been so damaged from obesity that you don't, it's, the sugar rush is the only time you feel any energy at all. But if you uh, follow my advice, exercise, get fit, get healthy, nutrition, you will eventually reach a point of health where you have a normal metabolism and you have normal healthy energy all day long, so you will not need that sugar rush or whatever uh, high that you're getting from the food, all right? So I would say learn to cook. If you're really bad at cooking, they actually now have um, meal delivery services where they deliver the ingredients right to your house and they have a little instruction thing. It's just step by step. It's like paint by numbers. It's basically cook by numbers. You can't fuck it up. So no excuses. I don't care if you've never cooked before. You can get these cook by the numbers things delivered to your house and they are expensive but they're no more expensive than the junk food that you're already getting that's killing you and these will be extending your life instead so there's no excuses learn to cook or get these cook by the numbers thing and replace the junk food with that i would also say don't screw around with a little bit of junk food now and then that's like a heroin addict who beats heroin, he goes to rehab, he's finally clean, and then he thinks, well, just once a week maybe I'll shoot up. You know how that's gonna go. If you're an addict, you can't do it in moderation. It wouldn't be called addiction if you could, okay? So be honest with yourself in that regard and don't dabble around with having, oh, a little bit once in a while. That's just, that's gonna be worse. That's gonna torture you. That's gonna torture you. So I would say do a clean sweep and replace it with cooked food that is, uh, you can cook some delicious stuff, okay? And lastly, sedentary lifestyle. Well, the easiest way to get out there is walking. Most people can walk 
If you cannot walk, then uh, you probably need physical therapy or maybe to do something in a pool, right? So you need special care and assistance. But the majority of people can at least walk a little bit, right? Now, sometimes people will say, oh, they're not the type that exercises, they hate exercises. Look, some of those people are hopeless cases because all exercise is, is movement. So what type of life do you want to have? Just where you never move? There's people in hospitals that have been paralyzed by accidents that would give anything to be able to get up and just walk down the street. And here you are, relatively able-bodied if you can still walk, and you're actually wasting it? Okay. If you're a hopeless case, and I hope you're not, but if you are one of those people, just get the fuck out. You, some people were just never meant to be healthy for whatever reason. They're just, they're so damaged and defective that they had, they're, they are a hopeless case, okay? If, if you just hate movement, uh, maybe you just hate being alive. I mean, maybe this is just a slow form of suicide. All right, so hopeless cases, get the fuck out. But if you're not a hopeless case, I would highly recommend you start with walking and let's just list some of the benefits of walking to help motivate you, okay? Um, walking gives you fresh air. It gives you sunlight, which gives you, if it's, you know, during the day, which gives you, lets you make, uh, use the vitamin D, right? Um, it gives you social interaction because there's people around. So even if you don't talk to the people, it still helps your brain because you've, you've, you're now out there, in the ebb and flow of life, you've rejoined society symbolically, you've rejoined community, you're no longer a weird hermit that eats ice cream in your basement, okay? Now, the open, uh, the open sights when you're walking and the repetitive motion of walking, that lowers your cortisol, which is a stress hormone that makes you fat. So it lowers your cortisol, lowers your stress hormone. It also increases serotonin, which gives you an overall sense of well-being. All right, so it combats stress and you'll even burn a few calories as well. So for all those reasons, um, you need to start walking if you're not and then progress to um, calisthenics, running, resistance training, and so forth. But you need to start. Stop being a couch potato, right? You need to fill your days. You can't just be on a diet and just sit there you're never gonna get anywhere because every second will seem like a goddamn eternity. All right, I hope this video has been helpful to you. Now, if you wanna take more steps on your journey to health, well, first of all, participation is the first step towards accountability, right? Participation, building community, reaching out, all of the things that prevent you from social isolation, which is pretty much death with regard to obesity. Once the person gets to the stage that they'll never leave their house and they don't want any witnesses to the horrible shit they're doing to their body, that's doom, right? So what you can do right now is just leave a comment. Just participate in the community, build community. Leave a comment, say where you're at, say what your goals are. If you've been doing bad, confess, get it off your chest. And when you type all the bad stuff you did, you're going to be able to see, oh man, this, yeah, I did do that. I need to stop that. All right? So I don't care. I don't care precisely what you type. First, we just have to get you from inside your head to actually out participating in even the most minor way, right? Because that's the beginning of accountability. And if you don't have the energy to type a comment when you're sitting on your ass, are you really going to have the energy to make that fundamental change to your life to reclaim your health? Of course, if you can't even type a comment, then maybe you're just dead. I don't know. Are you just dead on the couch? We're trying to, you have, at some point you have to act like you have more energy than you necessarily do. Because once you push yourself in the right direction, you'll kind of, uh, stumble that way, so to speak, right? You don't have, you don't need to have as enough energy to finish. You just have to have the energy to start because people tend to um, go on momentum, right? So if you push yourself out the door, so to speak, into participation, um, that's, that's the first step. Another thing to do is click that bell notification so that you get notified when I make a video because I, I'm going to do these videos maybe once a week or once every two weeks. And if you miss one, if you're just not watching at that time and you miss one, you could go like weeks without have basically re-upping your motivation. So click on the bell icon, you'll get notified or uh, watch the playlist, right? Rewatch some videos and so forth. But participation is key. 
All right, so hope you enjoyed this video. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.